Okay, great. So we are also happy that we have Alicia today with us. And she is a professional in sustainable development with more than 10 years of experience. And she will provide us with some insights how you as consumer make, can make a contribution by using the right um, consumer information tools. And we are very to have you, Lucia. And so, uh, yeah, the digital stage is yours. I'm still mute. Okay, let me share my screen. Can you see my screen now? Yes. All right, perfect. I just need to. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, before I start, please let me know if I talk too fast because I tend to talk really fast. Uh, I'm happy to, to be with you all here. This is my first um, involvement in, in the talk, so I'm really happy. Thank you to Stephanie in uh, bring me in. And um, just to give you a bit more context that um, I used to work with the government and private sector and also with the consumer. So today I would like to, to share some insight with you and hopefully I can also learn some insight uh, from all of you about uh, consumer information tools and also how this could help us as a consumer to combat climate change in the tourism building and also um, the food system. I'm, I believe that all of us are familiar with this. Um, before I start, um, I would like to ask you to, to hold to this question. How's our choices could reduce the negative impact of climate change? So I would like to ask you to think how we as a consumer who buy food, um, enjoying like the tourism and um, can contribute to this um, action. So let's begin. Why is this topic relevant? Why tourism? Why building? Why food sector? So it turns out these three sectors together account for more than half of humanity's contribution to energy related to CO2 emission. And the second point is, I don't put like a, a really like exact number here. I just want to simplify and we can um, have a further discussion on that. So consumption patterns in these sectors are critical to reduce global C2 emission. And the last one is that consumer information tools can influence our behavior as consumer and help us to take more uh, sustainable uh, consumption um, choices. So how complex it is. Um, I cannot see the chat box now, but if one of you or all of you are familiar with the complex uh, system thinking, I think I would like to put it um, as this um, terminology, like imagine how, how our like body function and how our body part will influence the other part. So it's also apply in this approach. Value chain in tourism, food and building are characterized by different degrees of complexity. For example, in tourism, transportation is actually generally the major aspect determining the climate outcome of tourism activities. So if we think about the tourism activity, it's actually the transportation is contributing to the, the highest uh, contribution to the high level of CO2 emission. And it's followed by the accommodation because the accommodation will stay in the hotel or we stay in the, in, in, in the camping. It will influence the way we consume the energy. And I think uh, Viola later on in her presentation will touch upon more detail uh, about this. And uh, next point is in the building sector. So each stage of dwelling life cycle or like building at a construction, it will produce also emission. So when we think about perhaps you would like to build a new house, we would like to build a new office, we would like to build a new factory. So it's really good if we also know what are the activities within the building and construction um, value chain or, or step processes, because these involve the type of energy and also how much energy that we will use. And in the food sector, reduction in the green gas, gas emission are possible throughout the food system. For example, about the production, how we produce our um, food. Uh, Dagmar mentioned about try to eat locally, try to use the product which available locally. 
perhaps this is why the inform uh, consumer information come into place because it will help us as consumer to identify, to assess where we could um, get or buy the best resource of like food. And of course the food processing, retail and consumption also, also really matter. So what type of consumer um, are you here? There's like, um, the first one is um, the cerebral change in consumer. I think it's also Dagmar make a, a really good intro in this session. I think I will need some of uh, your help if you're still around because this is, we will talk a little bit about like human psychology. So are you a type of avoidance to not consume specific items at all because you know it's bad and you stop consuming it? Are, are you thinking now, okay, I will try by shifting. So to use products that are comparably less carbon intent, for example, I will just eat um, local meat, for example, instead of like import like beef from, from other part of the country. Or I, I rather saving to use products over longer time frame before replacing them is mostly probably for house appliances to, to um, I prefer to invest, for example, in electric car. And some maybe I'm sort of like consideration, I will be more considerate in becoming a consumer. So to, to see how my choices also influence, uh, influencing others. Like for example, I prefer to eat locally because it also will improve the local economy, something like that. Or you prefer to vote, like more like politically engage with your local municipality, national uh, government, or even if you work in the international level with other countries talking about trade. So perhaps we could share about this later. Which type of consumer are you? And perhaps later that Mark can jump in. So this is how, uh, let me put this, okay. This is like, the complexity of purchasing decision for organic food. I know like now the trend is like people tend to, okay, I would like to have an organic food, but actually consciously and subconsciously, this has happened within ourselves, within our brain as a consumer without we, we realizing it or not. For example, like, of course that the price, the, um, the characteristic of the food, the product is also matter. Um, and also um, psychological factors like organic food is, is healthy, but actually if we take a look at, at it later, it's not always been healthy. So this kind of like talking about consumer information and where to access, where to us is really important for us to know. Although I can uh, admit that the consumer information tools or the tools or the information that is provided by the producer government or among us is not really sufficient at the moment is confusing. And there's a discussion about how I can reflect my consumption in terms of CO2 emission, how I can calculate. It's still a bit challenging, but we can um, talk about that uh, later. This is just to give you some overview and someone says we as consumer without we realizing it or not, this is happening in our brain when we're about to um, make our purchasing decision. And also this sort of kind of like um, um, overview, how our decision is actually matters, is uh, being um, reflected in this uh, uh, figures. I'm not going to go into detail because it's very technical, but it's just to hopefully it will trigger you if you haven't seen a chart like this, it's actually what we eat, what we choose is matter. I'm not saying um, uh, we just have to stop eating, eating, eating meat because people diets are different, our health conditions are different. And even I, I saw like uh, a month ago, an article in the Guardian means that like um, eating, um, eating meat with a, a certain treat on the supply chain can actually um, reduce uh, CO2 compared with the existing or conventional one. So it's still like an uh, ongoing like processes as well. This is just to give you some, some overview. So how to get familiar with these um, consumer um, information tools? So um, knowing our choices matters is one of the fundamentals awareness that we could hold into. These uh, I put here uh, sort of like tools or labels that available now 
For example, the most common information tools uh, in all three sectors are certification. Therefore, it is useful to find out before we consume. For example, if we want to, to, to eat something like um, what are the carbon uh, footprint? Because the highest part from the food system also how the product of our food is being transported. I agree with Dagmar, if we can eat like something which produced locally, it will be better because it's safe the CO2 emitted into our atmosphere. So this like part is um, giving us as a consumer sort of like a general figure, how our action has actually impact the environment. And the back to certification, the ways in which certification address consumer are often different in these three sectors. And I admit that this is also tricky for us as consumer to understand all this like charts, all this um, uh, uh, figures here. I, I admit that I'm also sometimes still find a challenge how to interpret this, which product I should choose. This is the challenge that um, the producer or the government um, try to discuss and find the best, best solution as well. But uh, I believe we as consumer as well can step in into this process to give a sort of like share our input and learn from each other and to make uh, a best decision for us. And um, I'll give you some other example. Maybe some of you um, also familiar with this because when we did some research, um, a lot of example is coming from Europe and also the context of our uh, discussion today is Alma in Europe, but we still have some challenges in, in other um, part of the region. Uh, so if you have more information, please feel free later to share how this um, consumer information tools can be shared and uh, can enrich our knowledge as well. And yeah, um, it is true that um, climate change is a problematic concept for its high degree of abstractness. Although I'm like working in this domain, there's still a lot of um, points or um, research that still be abstract and need a further study. And um, one of the challenge that um, the government or or even as a consumer, how is there is a need to improve um, carbon literacy level of uh, for consumer and specific carbon information tools should be developed for each of these three um, subsectors and also to support us as a consumer to be able to understand what actually means for us in understanding this um, labeling or certification to help our decision. So um, next one is after know all these tools, what we can do, um, how you could plan a better next, uh, better for your next holiday. So I will say that probably when we go to like selecting our accommodation in terms of like building, we will take a look at the certification. We use like environmentally um, friendly um, building and construction. I see like a lot of like bamboo, like in Eco Village, for example, and also ask like where the food will be um, provided, like local food is preferred. And also the transport, when we refer to the earlier slide where I share, like transport actually in the tourism is like contributing to the highest um, CO2 emissions. So perhaps um, instead of going somewhere else, this is quote unquote after when uh, the COVID uh, is start to get better, our crisis start getting better. But it's good to, to do the research now and to get familiar with these consumer tools. And back to transport, uh, we can also find a way to measure if we take a train, if we take a plane, if we take a car, or we do like hiking, this kind of thing. So I think this, these are the climate action we as a consumer or as an individual could start to think about it. So I would like to, to ask you to perhaps ask question and also get familiar with this because your action, your choices actually matter. Our action and our choices actually really matter and, and bring a huge impact. If it's not today, if it's not tomorrow, it's for the next generation. So this is like the abstractness is coming into place because most of the time we cannot see immediately the output of or the outcome of our action. It's always be like, like long-term. But 
by having this consciousness and awareness, what we choose today is actually influence us tomorrow or will bring some impact, whether it's positive or negative to, to us. I think we can um, create a, a better, better um, environment. And uh, thank you. That's some of the insight for me. I'm sort of like simplify everything, but I'm welcoming um, question. And also, um, I'm sure like Wolfgang also Viola will um, enrich my presentation. This is just to trigger you actually your choices matter. And a lot of consumer information tools that you could use or refer to help you making your decision. And these are the gap that we, especially for ISACers, the change agent, how to bring this more into our network, our society, at least our family or the people next to us from now on to the future. So thank you very much. And I'm looking forward for your thoughts and sharing session.